This is part five, part E, of chapter 27 of the Heart of the Buddha's Teaching by Tish Nhat An, the chapter entitled The Twelve Links of Interdependent Co-Arising. At the end of D, I had read the feeling that we have when we see people oppressed or starving can give rise in us to concern, compassion, and the willingness to act with equanimity, not with attachment. And we'll continue from there. The wisdom of equality comes from the seventh consciousness, Manas. Manas is the number one discriminator. It says, this is me, this is mine, this is not mine. That is Manas specialty. We have to keep this consciousness so that it can become the wisdom of equality. Our consciousness has to be transformed and not thrown away. It is the same with the five aggregates. We don't say the five aggregates are suffering and throw them away. If we do, then will be nothing left, no nirvana, no peace, no joy. We need an intelligent policy for taking care of our garbage. <clears throat> Wonderful observation wisdom transforms manas into the wisdom of equality. We are one, we are equal. I may think that you are my enemy, but while touching the ultimate dimension, I see that you and I are one. Sometimes we only need to touch the earth once and the wisdom of equality appears right in the heart of our manas consciousness. Wonderful observation wisdom takes the place of the sixth consciousness, mind consciousness. Before the disappearance of ignorance, the sixth consciousness gives rise to many wrong perceptions like seeing a rope as a snake and a lot of suffering. Thanks to transformation at the base, the store consciousness becoming great mirror wisdom, the sixth consciousness can be transformed into wonderful observation wisdom. The fourth wisdom, great mirror wisdom, brings about miracles. In the past, our eye consciousness made us infatuated or put us in the dark. Now, with our eyes open, we can see the Dharmakaya, the teaching body of the Buddha. When our mind is clear like a calm river, the sixth consciousness is wonderful observation wisdom, and our store consciousness is great mirror wisdom. Clear understanding conditions. The the great aspiration wisdom. If consciousness conditions mind-body, what does wisdom condition? We have mind and body. Bodhisattvas have a body and a mind, and the Buddha has a body and a mind. We should not throw away our body and mind in order to experience liberation. We use the term nirmanakaya, transformation body, to describe the bright side of mind-body. In this body and mind, there is no longer ignorance, volitional actions, or wrong consciousness. The function of this body and mind is to awaken and liberate liber living beings. Love and compassion can manifest in hundreds of thousands of different forms. Avalokiteshvara can appear as a child, a politician, or as a beautiful woman with a voice as clear as the song of the Kalavika bird, the Indian cuckoo. A bodhisattva can be beautiful or ugly, poor or rich, healthy or sick. Any mind-body that has the function to bring about love, understanding, and happiness is the transformation body of the Buddha. If mind-body conditions consciousness on one side, 
and the six ayatanas on the other side, and the transformation body conditions wisdom on one side, what does it condition on the other? We can say that it conditions the result body, Sambo Gaikaya, which is the fruit of deep practice that is said to be marked by 32 signs. Everybody is a collection of the five aggregates and has mental and physiological components, name and form. In the case of the Sambo Gaikaya, the physiology and the psychology contain clarity, bodhicitta, and the four wisdoms as means for teaching the path and do not contain ignorance. Even within a Buddha's mind-body, there is contact. The Buddha drinks water and wears warm clothes. If he is not protected from the cold, he will become ill. When the six sense organs of the Buddha are in contact with the six sense objects, the Buddha has feeling, but that feeling does not lead to grasping and attachment. Contact in a Buddha, Sambo Gakaya, is purified and mindful, and feelings are the same. The Sambo Gakaya is wholly protected because he practices guarding his six sense organs and their objects. We can also practice shining the light of mindfulness on the contacts that take place between our sense organs and sense subjects. If we do not guard these contacts, even if we sit in meditation hall for 12 hours a day, we are not practicing. When we walk, talk, eat, or whatever we do, if we guard our senses, the contacts will take place between our sense organs and sense objects will be clear and calm. As far as the positive side of the 12 links is concerned, contact becomes mindfulness of contact, and feeling becomes mindfulness of feeling. Every contact of the senses and every feeling has clarity and calmness. When feelings and contacts are protected, they lead not to craving, but to love, compassion, joy, and equanimity, the four immeasurable minds. With mindfulness, we, set, we see feelings as painful, pleasant, or neutral. When we see people suffering or in pain, or when we see them enjoying themselves in a foolish way, a feeling in us gives rise to the energy of loving kindness, the desire and the capacity to offer real joy and this leads to the energy of compassion. The desire and the capacity to help living beings put an end to their suffering. This energy gives rise to joy in us, and we are able to share our joy with others. It also gives rise to equanimity, not taking sides or getting carried away by the images and sounds brought to us through contact and feelings. Equanimity does not mean indifference. We see the ones we love and the ones we hate equally and try our best to make both of them happy. We accept the flowers and the garbage with neither attachment nor aversion. We treat both with respect. Equanimity means to let go, not to abandon. Abandoning causes suffering. When we are not attached, we are able to let go. The four immeasurable minds are the basis for freedom. When we are in touch with things by means of the mind of love, we do not run away or seek. That is the basis of freedom. Aimlessness takes the place of grasping. When we have freedom, what seemed to be suffering becomes wondrous being. It can also be called the kingdom of God or the pure land. Someone who is free has the ability to establish a pure land, a place where people do not need to run. Wondrous being is beyond being and non-being. If a bodhisattva needs to manifest being, if he needs to be born in this world, he will be born 
in this world. There is still life, but he is not caught in ideas of being, non-being, birth, or death. Wondrous being is the equivalent to the coming to be of the conventional 12 links. Wondrous being is the basis for being born without getting caught in the wrong ideas about birth and death. The leaf has the appearance of being born and dying, but is not caught either. The leaf falls to the earth without any idea of dying, and is born again by decomposing at the foot of the tree and nourishing the tree. The cloud has the appearance of dying in becoming rain, but it feels no sorrow or pain. There are people who suffer when they see a leaf die. In the age of Romanticism, there were young people who picked up fallen flower petals, buried them, wept, and wrote epithets. When a leaf is born, we can sing happy continuation. When a leaf falls, we can sing happy continuation. When we have awakened understanding, birth is a continuation and death is a continuation. Birth is an appearance and death is an appearance. People also appear to be born, grow old, and die. We study the 12 links of interdependent co-arising in order to diminish the element of ignorance in us and to increase the element of clarity. When our ignorance is diminished, craving, hatred, pride, doubt, and views are also diminished, and love, compassion, joy, and equanimity are increased. This happens in all 12 Nidanas. After clarity, there is bodhicitta, the great aspiration. The key is the guarding of the six senses and mindfulness of feelings and contact. This is the place we can enter into the cycle and begin to transform it. In his Dharma talk, the Buddha cautioned his disciples not to be attached to either bhava or abhava being or non-being, because bhava and apava are just constructs of the mind. Reality is somewhere in between. When we present the 12 links in the usual way, if we say there is no attachment, <clears throat> it means there will be no being, that we are aspiring to a bhava. But this is exactly what the Buddha did not want. If you say that the purpose of the practice is to destroy being in order to arrive at non-being, this is entirely incorrect. With non-attachment, we see both being and non-being as creations of our mind, and we ride the wave of birth and death. If we don't mind birth, we don't mind death. If we have to be born again to continue the work of helping, that is okay. We know that nothing is born and nothing can die. We have the wisdom of no birth and no death. We know that there is birth, old age, and death, but we also know that these are only waves on which bodhisattvas ride. Birth is okay and death is okay. If we know that they are only concepts in our mind, reality transcends both birth and death. In the 11th century in Vietnam, a monk asked his meditation master, where is the place beyond birth and death? The master replied, in the midst of birth and death. If you abandon birth and death in order to find nirvana, you will not find nirvana. Nirvana is in birth and death. Nirvana is birth and death. It depends on how you look at it. From one point of view, it is birth and death. From another, it is nirvana. Let us not present the teaching of the Buddha as an attempt to escape from life and go to nothingness or non-being. Bodhisattvas vow to come back again and again to serve, not because of craving, but because of their concern and willingness to help. The practice of mindful living develops the same kind of wisdom, concern, and loving-kindness in us so we can serve. 
it is time for us to present the teaching of interdependent co-arising in a way that it is easy and approachable for the people of our time. Those who teach the 12 links need to understand their positive side also. When we are motivated by our mind of love, all 12 links become brighter. And they have two charts in here that I want to put up on the screen. Um, one is the 12 links, the two aspects of interdependent co-arising. And it goes again from uh, when conditioned by deluded mind here and when conditioned by true mind next to it. So here's the, the non-true and the true. And it goes down in columns all the way down to old age and death beneath ignorance at the top and wisdom of no death at the bottom. And I'll just uh, read them out. Ignorance in, in dilute, under diluted and um, true mind, clear understanding. Diluted has volitional actions and true mind has great aspiration. Diluted consciousness, the first five consciousnesses, and uh, under true mind has four wisdoms. Wisdom of wonderful realization, wonderful observation, wisdom of equality, and great mirror wisdom. And down here at number four is, under diluted is mind-body, and under true mind it has transformation body. Under diluted, it has six sense organs and their objects. True mind has result body, the Sambo Gaikaya. Under ignorance, it has contact. And under true mind, it has mindfulness of contact. Feeling has the opposite of mindfulness of feeling. Craving has the opposite of the four immeasurable minds. Grasping has the opposite of freedom. Coming to be has the opposite of wondrous being. Birth as part of the deluded mind and under a true mind it's wisdom of no birth. And under deluded old age and death and under true wisdom of no death. And one more chart has 12 links, the two aspects of interdependent co-arising. And what you're going to see here is on starting at the top and the outer circle is all the true mind. And on the inner circle here is all the points of the deluded mind. And I'll just... Read them out once again. I'll go clockwise. Clear understanding. This is all true mind. Great aspiration. Four wisdoms. Transformation body. Result body. Mindfulness of contact. Mindfulness of feeling. Four immeasurable minds. Freedom. Wondrous being. Wisdom of no birth. Wisdom of no death. And I think you already know the ones that are on the inside here starts with ignorance, volitional actions, consciousness, mind, body, six sense organs and their objects, contact, feeling, craving, grasping, coming to be, birth, old age, and death. <clears throat> there is co-arising conditioned by deluded mind and co-arising conditioned by true mind. The world society and the individual have been formed by a cycle of conditions based on deluded mind. Naturally, in a world based on deluded mind, there is suffering and affliction. But when conditions are based on true mind, they reflect the wondrous nature of reality. Everything depends on our mind. Imagine 1,000 people whose, mind, whose minds are 
full of misperceptions, wrong views, envy, jealousy, and anger. If they come together, they will create a hell on earth. The surroundings they live in, their daily lives, and their relationships will all be hellish. If two people full of misunderstanding live together, they create a hell realm for each other. How much greater the hell of 1,000 people. To make hell into paradise, we only need to change the mind on which it is based. To change the minds of 1,000 people, it may be necessary to bring in some element from the outside, like a Dharma teacher or a group of people practicing the Dharma. Imagine 1,000 people who do not have wrong perceptions, anger or jealousy, but who have love, understanding and happiness. If these people came together and form a community, it would be a paradise. The mind of the people is the basis of paradise. With your deluded mind, you make hell for yourself. With your true mind, you make paradise. If two people come together with true mind, they make a small paradise for themselves. If a third person wants to join them, they should be careful. Should we let him join us or not? If their paradise is solid, they can allow him to join. With two true minds, there is hope that one deluded mind can gradually uh, be transformed. Later, there will be three true minds, and this small paradise will continue to grow. Many volumes have been written about the 12 links of interdependent co-arising based on deluded mind. We have to open a new door and teach the practice of the 12 links based on true mind in order to bring about a world of peace and joy. And that is the end of chapter 27.